Well, good afternoon, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started with the Ohio Distance Learning Association Career Connection Showcase. Welcome. This afternoon, we'll be focusing on middle school programs and some opportunities available throughout the state of Ohio as we're looking to uh, prepare our students for for career exploration and helping them think about their futures and the many options available for, for them. I'm Tisha Lewis. I am with the Department of Education on the Career Connections team. Um, our goal at the department is that all students are prepared for successful post-secondary outcomes, and we want all of our kids prepared with career advising throughout the grade level spans. We want career awareness happening as early as kindergarten where students can understand um, what a what you know the 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 reason people work and and that they can they can accomplish anything that they are interested in and, and want to do we can help them through that in the middle grades we want to help them explore and really get an understanding of how their aptitude skills interests match up with occupations and then in the high school it's really about planning helping them take courses get experiences um, whether that's job shadowing work-based learning whatever it might be um, to really learn and and become confident in their choices so they can make good decisions about their post-secondary education and work plans after high school. The uh, Ohio Distance Learning Association is uh, partnering and they provide opportunities to schools, um, experiences for students, no matter where you live in Ohio. And so I'm really excited um, to introduce the team today um, that we'll be pre presenting to you. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, during the, the, the webinar, we are recording it. Um, so uh, if you can go ahead and mute your, make sure you're, you're muted so, uh, so we don't have any feedback or any kind of weird stuff going on, um, that would be really great. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and type them in the chat box. Hopefully you can all see the chat box uh, at the bottom of your, of your screen. Um, and, and we will be answering uh, questions through the chat. We'll be taking the chat questions at the end and answering them uh, through each of the different panelists. You can also email questions to the presenters. Um, they'll be sharing their contact information today. And we'll get go ahead and get started. Uh, Kathy Moore from North Central Ohio Education Service Center has uh, graciously volunteered to to monitor the chat for questions. So any questions that you have, just type them in at any point. Um, and we'd like to thank uh, especially Laura Bryson from the Broadcast Educational Media Commission at the State of Ohio for setting up this webinar and just giving us this opportunity to share what's happening around the state and how we can get kids into uh, many different uh, career opportunities without leaving the classroom. So with that, I'm going to start it off by turning the session over to Jennifer Schwellick. Uh, she's an instructional specialist at Info Ohio. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tisha. And today we will look at what InfoHio provides for Ohio schools to transform student learning. And we'll look at three tools provided by InfoHio to help middle school students explore and learn about careers. InfoHio transforms student learning in four different ways. We license a collection of instructional content selected to support Ohio's learning standards at no cost to Ohio schools. We develop free web-based instructional tools to help students learn and grow, and we provide cost-effective professional development and support to Ohio's pre-K-12 educators to help them integrate technology and adopt strategies that positively impact student learning. The way you probably know us best is through library automation. More than 20 years ago, we got our start by supporting library automation software used in schools. Today, we support an integrated library automation system for more than 2,200 Ohio schools that serves more than 1.1 million students statewide. This past summer, InfoHio introduced a new, easier to use website. With geolocation added to our site, users in Ohio are automatically logged in. 
If your device does not automatically authenticate, choose the button in the top left to look up your school's username and password. If you have difficulty logging in, please contact support.infoohio.org, where our staff can assist you so that you can access the resources. Now, let's see how InfoHio can help your students with career exploration. Begin by accessing InfoHio at www.infoohio.org. Here you will gain instant access to InfoHio's databases and tools, and in most schools, to the school library collection. Click on the grades six through eight button for middle school digital tools and resources. When you click that button, you'll get a page that looks like this and you'll find resources that are selected for middle school students. Today, we are going to look at three of those resources. I Wonder, iSearch, and WorldBook. And we'll begin with I Wonder. When you go to access any one of the InfoHio resources, you'll always see this little eye in the upper right-hand corner. Underneath that eye is all kinds of great information. So for I Wonder and for all the resources, you'll find a URL that you can use to link that resource right into your Google Classroom or to your website. You'll find training and support materials and you'll find other resources that you might like to use. With this particular page, let's begin by looking at the I Wonder Genius Teacher Hour, Genius Hour Teacher's Guide because that has lots of ideas to help your students get started with discovery and inquiry, which is what they're going to need to do when they're exploring careers. The Genius Hour Teacher's Guide provides resources, Ohio standards, implementation plan, and um, in this plan, explore, you'll, you will explore I Wonder and then dig into additional exploration about a particular topic. We're going to use the topic of careers. But now let's really dig in and look at what I wonder. When you first launch I wonder, you will see lots of boxes with questions in it. The tool is organized in a question format. Each question contains additional information. So as we scroll down the page, I find a question, what do you want to be? to learn about different jobs? Do you want to prepare for your future? So I'm going to pick out, do you want to know what jobs are right for you? And when I do, I find links to many resources that will help in career exploration. One of them is the career cluster inventory, and that is from Ohio Means Jobs. So when I get to Ohio Means, when I get to that, and I click on the clear, career cluster inventory, immediately I'm presented with the Ohio Means Jobs career cluster inventory. And students can complete this. When they complete that inventory, they're going to find out occupations that they might be interested in exploring. So for more exploration, they can come back to I Wonder and click on, do you want to discover more? That little button right there is going to take them to iSearch. And iSearch offers students a way to search almost all the InfoHio databases and their school library print and digital collection. So in this uh, case, I've typed in coding careers. I'm gonna press the iSearch search button. And when I do, voila, I get a list of lots of different articles and materials with coding co careers as well as books. I'm going to click on the Cool Coding Club View Download button. When I do that, I get a, a page that tells me where the PDF is, where I can see the article. I see on the right that I can go to Google Classroom, Google Drive. I can get a citation for the article. And when I click the PDF, here is the article right in front of me. So iSearch it will give you many different ways to find additional information. 
to find yet even deeper information or a different variety of information, we can go back to the Info Ohio website and click on grades six to eight. And again, we get to this middle school um, band of resources and I'm going to click on World Book Student this time. When I click on World Book Student, I have this very interesting, fun interface and as a teacher, I can go up to the right-hand corner and find lesson plans and other resources to help me, as well as uh, standards, Ohio standards are in there, to help me with what I'm um, trying to teach. As a student, I can go down and, and begin doing uh, my research and keeping track of my research. I can look at free featured art, um, articles. This one is on drones or I can search. So I'm just gonna do a broad search and search for careers. When I do that, I get this nice article about careers. On the left, I see lots of additional pieces like an introduction, choosing and planning a career, getting a job, the world of work. I also see that I can read, read something, I can look at media and I can get related information. I'm gonna hit the media. And when I do, there are lots of videos that I can look at about specific careers. And here is one about a computer programmer. If I wanted to watch that, I could. I'm going to tell you just a couple of additional items about InfoHio that will help you extend your search across the InfoHio content and help you keep in touch with InfoHio. So first of all, this is Educator Tools. Educator Tools is a brand new InfoHio tool that was developed in collaboration with a company called Novation. That is an Ohio company and it curates websites for schools. There are thousands of standard aligned, teacher approved lesson plans, assessments, and other instructional tools curated in this educator tools area. So you'll want to be sure to look at that to give help you with your own lessons. And if you would like to stay connected with InfoHio, which we hope you will, you'll want to be sure to subscribe to our e-list, follow us on Twitter, follow us on connect with the, to us on Facebook, so that you can keep up with what it is that is going on with InfoHio. And if you do those things, you will be the first to know about whatever is happening here in InfoHio. If you need more information about InfoHio or you have a question, feel free to use the link support.infoohio.org where you can fill out a little form, ask your question, and we'll get back to you within 24 hours. And now to learn a little bit more about career content for middle school students, I am gonna turn this over to Eric Seiler from IdeaStream. Eric, it's all yours. All right, well, thank you, Jennifer. Very, um, very good presentation. Um, I'm just getting myself situated here so you can um, see me and hear me. I see my audio is coming. I'm not sure if my video is coming through at all. Um, uh, you know, as, as everything goes in rehearsal, everything works. And uh, when it's time for the actual moment, um, technology has a way to um, poke fun at you. Are you getting my video as well? I don't know if anyone can respond to me on that. We are not getting your video, Eric. Not getting video, okay, interesting. Okay, it was there before, um, but you're getting my audio. So um, I'm gonna just talk a little bit and troubleshoot as I um, uh, continue to um, talk and um, hopefully uh, my video can pop up as well too. Um, the uh, we are the uh, you, this is Tom from the Cleveland Clinic. Do you want me to jump ahead while you do your troubleshooting? Sure, I, that's it's harder to talk and troubleshoot at the same time. Wonderful, I, I appreciate that, Tom. All right, I'll 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 jump in here. So. Okay, and toss it back to me. Thank you. I will. Thanks. All right, so uh, let's see here. Um, I am Tom Miller, uh, and uh, I was a I'm with the Cleveland Clinic. I'm glad to be here today and uh, I'd love to uh, share some information about the Cleveland Clinic's distance learning, connected learning programs. 
Um, we have a variety of programs here at the Cleveland Clinic where we bring students to the clinic and those are our internship programs. Uh, we also have programs where we send caregivers, uh, Cleveland Clinic health uh, professionals out to schools. And then the third way that we actually interact with K-12 schools is through our distance or connected learning. Uh, and we have two programs that I'm going to talk about today that are available for middle and high school students. Uh, the first one, and actually before we get started with that, I know that I can't actually give you a full long, hour long worldwide classroom session. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna just kind of simulate it here. We're gonna cram an hour session into about four minutes. Uh, so to start with, all of our worldwide classroom connected learning programs start with uh, an online poll. We ask the students a little bit about what they know. So if you have the ability, either in the chat um, or in your, um, uh, on your uh, uh, cell phone or, or smartphone, if you could go to www.menti.com and use the code 5411, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 541142, uh, uh, we would love to, to have you fill out the question that we have. Also, I'm going to put the link here in the chat, this is where I can find the chat, um, just so that you have it as well. Uh, if you can click on it right in the chat, and that'll take you directly to the website. Uh, so again, if you could go to 541142menti.com. This is how we start out sessions. We want to learn a little bit about what the students know about the uh, topic. Uh, it's either going to be a healthcare uh, professional, it's going to be a topic about a health issue. They're going to be interacting with a real Cleveland Clinic caregiver uh, who is a health professional. Uh, and this is also then how we follow up the session. Uh, we actually ask the questions again. Uh, to see what's going on and if the students have learned anything. Uh, we also use the polling tool quite effectively for Q&A uh, as well as uh, we do live questions. But as you can see, um, we're starting to build a little bit of knowledge here as people are logging in and, and telling us a little bit about uh, healthcare professions. Uh, and the reason I asked this question, and it, it's one that we continuously uh, strive to, to educate, uh, Cleveland Clinic, wow, People have good spelling skills. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, we, we want students to understand that there's a variety of different careers that you can have in healthcare, uh, both as a doctor, nurse, radiologist, et cetera, but also in other areas. Uh, so we highlight uh, health IT. We highlight a variety of different entry level uh, positions like a, a uh, uh, basically the similar to a, an STNA here, which is a uh, entry level nursing position. Uh, so those are just some of the, the, the types of um, interactions that we're striving for here. And we know with a distance learning program, with a connected learning program, uh, it's very challenging to get away from just being a presentation. So we use tools like our Mentimeter polls to have the students feel engaged. Um, and uh, with our worldwide classroom, uh, we highlight a variety of different caregivers. Uh, everybody here at Cleveland Clinic is considered a caregiver, but we do actually uh, highlight different careers, everything from audiologists through a variety of different surgeons. Uh, you can see here, uh, actually, this capture in the top corner, one of the sessions, Dr. Modlin, who is a world-renowned kidney surgery, actually narrates a kidney surgery. Uh, and the best thing about those sessions are we know we're getting to the kids when either they're fascinated and staring at the screen or their heads are down because they're not really uh, uh, prepared to see inside the body the way that Dr. Modlin takes them through that. Uh, so, but it is a, a wonderful experience. And he, in that process, not only explains how the kidney surgeon does his work, but also talks about the team. Uh, a kidney surgeon generally is relying on a team of 15 to 20 people for every surgery, uh, and he highlights the careers and the people that are on his team. Uh, another, act, uh, in the bottom corner there, we have uh, a pharmacist who is taking students through and explaining different processes within uh, pharmacy. Uh, and we use WebEx, it's, a, it's similar to Zoom, uh, and we, it's a real easy process for you to log in uh, and connect if you have a webcam. And we prefer a microphone, uh, but it's up to you. Uh, your students can join us. Um, we have a variety of different audiences. We have some schools where 
they're in an auditorium with 60, 70 kids. In other places we have, uh, where they're actually just one or two students in front of a laptop. Uh, you can actually join Worldwide Classroom using a cell phone. So, you know, we've, we've got a lot of varieties away. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to join. We also uh, want to stress it's free, uh, and we're always working on ways to make it engaging for your students. Um, so one of the ways that we highlight, uh, and, and up in the corner there, Ashley Austin is a, 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 has a whole bunch of letters next to her name, but basically she's a uh, pediatric anesthetist uh, that's a nursing practitioner. And she was part of a panel that we did last year. Uh, and as part of the panel to make it engaging for the students, we did a thing, uh, we did Mad Libs, uh, but we called it Med Libs. And the students texted in uh, words, you know, text in an adjective, text in a, a phrase you shout, et cetera. And then the panel of, and there's a midwife, a nurse anesthetist, and, and uh, two other nurse practitioners actually acted out a scenario uh, explaining how they do their jobs, but also with a little bit of fun. And um, Damon there is a, a nurse practitioner, and he actually was the the the, the person who was having the uh, babies, and the babies were all stuffed animals, and the students got to name them. So everybody had a good time with that. Uh, but also they learned about the the, the field of, of nursing, and also specifically nurse practitioners. Um, so uh, we actually have an upcoming Worldwide Classroom. Again, these are free. You can join uh, if you go to our website and register. Uh, there, We'll send you an invite and you can have your students join. But the one thing I wanted to share about our upcoming Meet the Occupational Therapist session, which is actually going to be several occupational therapists, one of the activities they're going to do with the students, and we'd like you to do this today. It's real quick, real simple. Uh, but take a pen and a piece of paper and with your non-dominant hand, so I'm left-handed, so I'm going to write with my left right hand. Try writing, I am writing this with my non-dominant hand. Let me give you 15 seconds or so to do that. So give it a try. See if you can do it. Um, I dare you to try it in cursive. That's even harder. Um, and it takes some concentration, doesn't it? Hopefully you guys are doing this. I can't see you, but I assume that, that you're good sports and you're giving it a try here. Um, so the physical therapist would have the students do this and, or the occupational therapist, there'll be a team of them. Uh, and then they'll start talking about a student, um, a patient. That they have. And that patient um, is, is going, it, the patient they're going to describe has uh, cerebral palsy and is struggling with basic motor skills. So they're really trying to tie in the emotional component, bringing some empathy to the session and having the students understand both the careers uh, that they're in, but also the patients that they work with. So that's just a real simple and quick activity. Uh, we also have um, a full schedule. Uh, we do meet the caregivers on Tuesdays, uh, twice a month. We also have a hot topics. Uh, each one of these is what we call a la carte. Join for the ones you want. If you can be there, that's great. Uh, it's a free registration. All you need is a webcam and a, and a, a, a microphone. And uh, these are not recorded. We get a lot of requests for those. Uh, because we do uh, strive for them to be interactive and to be live, uh, we don't do recordings. We really want the students to experience it there. Um, and again, these, it's a real simple process. If you just go to ccf.org uh, slash WW Classroom, you can join the Worldwide Classroom. And these are rolling throughout the year. Uh, every one of them is a little different. Every caregiver is going to bring their own brand to it. So even if you see one this year, it might be different next year, uh, just because we have different uh, uh, professionals that come through. But overall, uh, we had 18 different careers uh, or hot topics throughout the year. And I'm glad to answer questions at the end of the session here. We also have another program specifically for middle schoolers. Uh, this is a little bit more of a commitment. This is an eight week case study that we do. We do it January through March. There's eight sessions. The students actually interact with and are diagnosing a student. You can see TJ up there in the top corner getting, uh, um, working with a respiratory therapist uh, to do a, a bronco provocation test. TJ, you're gonna follow TJ, your students will, through the Adventures in Health Science and Medicine. We call it AWESOME, that's the acronym. Uh, you get a giant kit and the kit is full of experiments that, that demonstrate the science and then also the application of that science in each of the caregivers field. Uh, so if you can see, uh, we have a, a pharmacist that does suspensions and solutions, which is a integral to, to the way that they mix medications. 
you'll have a radiologist that'll go through a density activity and the kit weighs about 60 pounds and each week you pull out the session and all the resources are there. There's a handbook and that program uh, again is also free. Uh, there's a registration process. So it's a limited number of spaces. Registration opens on October 16th. Um, that's something that you have to be at every session on a Wednesday at nine o'clock from the beginning of January through the middle of March. We try to avoid the testing window by closing up in March. Uh, and that program culminates with an innovation. So the students are given a real world problem. Uh, they have two weeks to work on the problem and come up with some solutions. And then they pitch their problem, their solution to the other students in the program. So you'll be actually, it's a peer judging. Uh, the students love it because they're actually interacting with kids from other schools across the state or actually in other states. Um, and so we really, uh, and I did forget to mention that awesome, uh, the Adventures in Health Science and Medicine won the uh, United States Distance Learning Association's Innovation Award last year. Uh, which is, this is a subsection of the USDLA with the Ohio Distance Learning Association. So we were really happy to be recognized at a national level for this program. And, and it's a lot of fun to work with. And they meet 19 different career uh, professionals during that uh, eight week arc. So that's Adventures in Health Science and Medicine. I'm Tom Miller. Our websites are uh, ccf.org awesome, ccf.org slash uh, worldwide classroom. You can email me if you have questions. Uh, we'd love to have you join our worldwide classroom. That can happen literally on Tuesday if you're excited and you want to join us. Uh, for awesome, you have to wait for the registration process. And now I'm going to, I guess, hand it back to Eric. Uh, so let me uh, mute my microphone. And Eric, are you ready to jump back in? Oh, hi, Tom. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I guess people can hear me but can't see me. I do exist. I'm just not this phantom voice coming across the computer. Um, I, actually, I'm working now with uh, Laura Bryson. We were troubleshooting and um, I, we were a little perplexed. So um, I'm not sure if um, the next person is ready. I was going to, um, I guess, um, Jordan, uh, can I toss it to you uh, right now? Uh, your mic is muted, Jordan. I, don't sh I see your lips moving. Sorry, there we go. The moderator had us muted there. Um, good afternoon. My name is Jordan Rader, and I am the manager of COSI's interactive video conferencing program. And um, I wanted to start by um, talk talking about some of our um, other programs or some of our other resources that COSI offers before I dive into my program in particular. So if we take a look at our website here, I just wanted to point out something. This is COSI.org slash educators. And it's kind of an interesting resource to find about, out about all of the different programs that we offer. So you can actually search by grade level, um, content areas, um, keywords, things like that. And it will show you just all the different types of programs that COSI has to offer you. Some of those are distance learning, like the programs I'm about to describe. Some of those are where workshops where we actually drive out to you. Um, to your site there or where you can come here to a field trip. So I just wanted to point that out. That's cosi.org slash educators. But I, uh, I'm going to focus on our interactive video conferences today. In particular, I'm going to talk about our engineering challenge program. This is a one hour program that we do for middle school students. Um, it includes a connection like this where we would um, talk to the students in real time and we can see them and they can see uh, see and hear us and we do activities with them throughout the one hour session. Um, in this program, we are talking all about um, Mars and we start by discussing some of the um, situations on Mars, some of the climates, uh, things like that. And um, we talk about how it's very harsh and not a very good place for humans to go, at least not right now with the technology that we have. So what we've done instead is sent rovers up to Mars and we discuss the history of the rovers and the future of uh, the rover program. And uh, one of the demonstrations that we do during the program is about an RTG. And I'm gonna show you just um, kind of this cool little demonstration about how the um, Curiosity rover um, derives its uh, power to move around. So if we take a look up here, we're gonna see an example of a um, a thermoelectric generator. And basically what that is, it, it is a device that can turn a temperature difference 
into a uh, electric current. So I'm gonna put cold water into one side of this container over here. This is some ice water. And then on the other side, I'm going to place some hot water. And there's going to be a temperature difference between the two sides of this uh, device here. And as we get that temperature difference, there's going to start to create a, an electric current. And the electric current is going to cause our fan to spin. And this is how the, um, the Curiosity rover is deriving its electric current that powers it to drive around the surface of Mars. Now, it doesn't have hot and cold water. What it has is um, a cold outside, that is the atmosphere of Mars, and a warm inside that is powered by uh, radioactive material, so giving off lots of heat. And there's a pressure difference, or excuse me, a temperature difference between the inside and the outside. And through this thermoelectric generator, it generates electricity enough to power its entire um, apparatus. So that's just one of the demonstrations that we do during the program. Um, but we come to the end of our program and we realize that while these rovers are great, they actually do have some issues. The Curiosity rover has some problems right now. And I'm gonna pull up some video here to show us that um, pro problem with its wheels. The Curiosity rover has these holes that are wearing into its wheels, um, unforeseen by the um, the NASA engineers. And this is some footage from an actual recorded program here. Um, and so we leave your students with a challenge. Can they come up with a solution to this problem with the rover wheels? And we give them the, the supplies to work on that challenge. So after the students finish their um, video conference with us, the program uh, the video conference is over, but the rest of the session is not. And we end up with presenting them with a design challenge. And with this program, we will send your students a kit of materials. And inside this kit, one thing that they will find is a rover like we have right here. And the students will get um, the opportunity to design new wheels for our rover. So what they will do is actually take if we can get a close up of this guy here. There we go. They will get these little cardboard wheels and it's up to them to decide how they're going to um, put treads on these wheels. Do they want to use uh, paper clips or toothpicks or cotton balls or sandpaper or rubber bands or any other number of things that you might just have lying around your classroom? And then they will take these wheels, put them on the rover, and actually drive it around your classroom. And they can do different tests, like how far did it go, how fast did it get there, compare to their friends, uh, the other classmates, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's just kind of one of the activities that is included in the kit of materials that we will send to your students. And... Um, the kit includes supplies for up to 30 students working in um, usually groups of four, depending on the different activities. And we include all of the instructions for the different activities. There's the design wheel challenge is just one activity included in the kit of materials. And I wanted to show the um, teacher guide. Um, so if we can pull that up, the teacher guide has all the different instructions for our different activities. Um, so for example, um, Earth versus Mars is an activity where the students um, just, you know, basically get started at doing some research, figuring out um, the differences between the climate conditions on Earth here and Mars. Uh, another activity is packing for Mars, where students have to decide what materials they're going to bring with them. We have a limited amount of cargo space in our spaceship, and we have to decide, we have to prioritize um, what types of experiments we might be bringing with compared to that to um, uh, supplies for sustaining life, et cetera. Um, so just kind of working through those. And then you can see a whole list of post-visit activities there as well, including um, all of the instructions to facilitate those activities with your students. So this is just one example of the types of programs that COSI offers. Um, this one in particular is great for middle school students who are kind of getting into that whole uh, STEM career type exploration where they want to see if um, that might be somewhere where they want to lead. 
Um, but I did want to point out just one of our other programs that is extremely popular. Um, we do this program mainly for high school, but I did want to throw it out there as an option for middle school because we often do it for sixth and seventh graders if they are prepared for what they're about to see. Uh, and that is our surgical suite total knee replacement program. And that is a program where we connect live to a hospital uh, here in Columbus, Mount Carmel East Hospital, and a um, team of surgeons and other uh, medical professionals do an actual uh, total knee replacement live for the students and have the students have the ability to not only watch the procedure, hear the live narration, but also to interact with the doctor uh, and his team and ask questions about the procedure that they are seeing. Um, so there's uh, just a few of the different options that uh, of the programs that we offer. Um, our programs are um, both on demand or pre-scheduled. So for example, the engineering challenge that I started with is an on-demand program, meaning if we have space in, the, um, in our studio to present the program, you can do that basically whenever, you, whenever fits your schedule best. Um, the surgical suite, for example, though, is a pre-scheduled program. We can only do those when the hospital has a patient. So those are set for the entire year and you can see a list of dates on our website. Um, our programs are fee-for-service programs. So we offer programs that uh, for as little as $185. Those are one hour programs that do not include a kit of materials. Um, and then all the way up to our surgical suite program, which is $325, which is a 90 minute program uh, with the hospital live and also includes a kit of materials for um, both pre and post visit activities for your students to do. So um, just wanted to touch a little bit on some of the different offerings that we have here. And um, I think I'm gonna put up my contact information so that if you have any questions, uh, again, my name is Jordan Rader and I'm the manager of interactive video conferencing here at COSI. You can see our email address, videoconferencing at COSI.org or our website, www.cosi.org slash IVC. Uh, IVC is interactive video conferencing. Um, so hopefully um, we can get connected with you and your students here soon. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email and I'd be happy to talk um, about our different programs and our different options. Um, I guess I will mention maybe just how we can connect to you. We use um, Zoom meetings. Today we're using Zoom webinar, which is very similar, um, but we will actually have the two-way connection um, with our Zoom meetings, not like we have just the one way here in our webinar. Um, so it, we should be, um, pretty easy for us to connect to you. Uh, again, you'll just, just like you did for today, you'll just click a link that COSI will send to you. Um, the software will download automatically if you don't already have it. And you might have to tell it what um, microphone you get to use or want to use, and then we should be good to go. So it is very simple, and we'd be happy to um, talk to you about the, your connection options and making sure that that's all set if you have any questions about those. Um, I think that's all I have to say. So um, I think we will go ahead and I'm gonna pass it over to Lee at um, Cleveland if you're ready. I am prepared ladies and gentlemen and I've got my standing by screen up there with just the museum logo, my name and the email address. And to make sure that we have successfully transferred via webinar, if somebody could toss a chat at me just to let me know that they, uh, Museum logo is showing up and then I will launch into my best Billy Mays impression. Hey, I saw seeing you Lee. Thanks guys. First of all, Tom Miller, look man, this was really hard. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but this, <laughs> this was one of the hardest things I've ever done. So thank you for challenging my brain that way. And I think I've sleuthed out the problem. It's this non-dominant hand. I really need to get rid of this thing, sorry. Hey guys, welcome to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. I'm standing here in a room full of random stuff because we're a museum. We collect, get out of here, non-dominant hand, shoo. We collect a lot of random stuff. And like Jordan was describing, content providers will often send you a box full of things. So what I decided to do today was give you a quick overview of the way that the Natural History Museum angle can be used to open your kids' eyes to the world of 
really weird careers that are out there. Things that I didn't even know existed until I started working here. I had a lot of different jobs when I was a kid. I did puppet stuff for a while with a puppet company, and I worked at SeaWorld of Ohio, if anybody remembers that, talking about marine mammals. So when I rolled up in here, I said, hey, I'm here to teach about nature. But it's not just about nature. It's about all the ways that you communicate and appreciation and an understanding of the natural world. Here we go. Here is my selection of ways that we show your kids when you're in middle school and you're thinking, what do I want to be when I grow up? And yeah, we're having this class from the museum today, you know, well, dinosaurs, whatever. That's what kids think of, right? Dinosaurs. But if you're studying dinosaurs, sometimes you have to study all the aspects of that living creature. So starting from the smallest, we've got, whoops, that was the non-dominant hand. Sorry, that's uh, an example of hitting the wrong button at the wrong time. There's what I wanted. That guy's name is Gavin Svensson, and he's a DNA researcher here at the museum. And he very specifically researches praying mantises. And when he is researching praying mantises, one of his jobs is to go out in the field and catch them. If I'm teaching a program about his research, I will describe that process. Hey, they get in a plane, they fly across the planet, they go catch praying mantises in other countries, and then come back and they study their DNA because we have a DNA lab downstairs in this museum. That's one of the secrets I think a lot of people don't realize about museums is that they are active research centers. There's a couple of electrophoresis chambers and some of the micropipetters that you would use. If a kid is thinking, oh, maybe forensics, like crime solving, that kind of stuff, you use that same equipment in museum research as well. And that way the kids get to see a neat, a neat overview of not just the fun of collecting the bugs, but also how you study them at the museum. Got a bunch of programs on genetics that highlight that kind of stuff. But dinosaurs, also very popular. I'll flip a picture of dinosaurs up here. And if you look in the bottom corner on the left, my buddy David Chapman is over there. I'll attempt to hover my arrow over his head. Ooh, hi, David. And what he's doing, this is a still shot from a live stream where I was chasing him around with the camera. You can see the chat. I know it's really tiny on the screen, but people were watching us from several different schools at that point, and they were all sending chat questions to me that I would relate to David. And that way he could describe the fact that that head on that dinosaur skeleton, that's a haplocanthosaurus, it's not the actual skull. Nobody has an actual skull. Nobody's ever found one. Their heads are so little, our, assu our assumption is, because lots of sauropods, those long-necked dinosaurs, right, they have tiny little heads that the head just rolls away or gets eaten by some other dinosaur or who knows what happened to it, but you find all the rest of the body. And that means a bunch of scientists had to work with an artist to say, here, look at this skull of this dinosaur that we did find, and can you sculpt a skull that looks pretty much like the same thing. I, I don't have a haplocanthosaurus I could pick up, but I do have this terrifying gorilla skull, which David made in the same way. We have the real skull downstairs. He takes all of his careful measurements, uses Legos, it's hilarious, to build these little shelves to hold up the rubber mold, and then he produces this, which is made out of a nice hard acrylic, and I can fool around with it and not break it. And that's a job. Scientists working with artists to create perfect copies of the real objects that we have at a museum. And we always make sure to point that out during all of our programs that feature skeletons of any kind because many of them at a museum are not the actual fossil specimen. That's like one of the number one, pardon me, whilst I, I got to make sure my chats are showing up on this phone. So I'm just making sure you guys aren't throwing stuff at me. <laughs> there we go. Um, the bones that you see, a lot of kids ask, is that real? And then you have to decide, well, what does real mean? It's not a hologram. No, it's actually a physical thing there in front of me. But is that the bone that they dug up out of the ground that was a dinosaur millions of years ago? Or is it a really, really good copy? That was a cool thing when I started working here. I'm like, I didn't know that when I was a kid, that art and science combined to produce what we see in the, in, in the museum itself. Then you've got kids who just like to wade around in the water. Here, check this out. This is one of my favorite things to do is go bother our experts in the field while they're doing their jobs and try and sneak up on them and take pictures. The lady in the red hat is Roberta, and she is a field researcher in amphibians. Her job is to go catch frogs and then analyze them for viruses. The guy with the camera is one of our, well, cameramen. And then the guy behind him, trying to look busy, that's John. <laughs> He's our science writer, so his job is to blog about everything going on at the museum. Now, not only is this a neat image of three people doing very different jobs, then you've got this aspect. I know it looks like Matt is over there checking his emails, totally ignoring poor Roberta, who's trying her hardest to be dramatic in a pond, right? And John is still just trying to look busy. But what he's really doing over here, what Matt's really up to, is he's tweeting about that. 
check it out. So many different jobs right there in that one program, talking about her field research, coming back and doing DNA research on the amphibians. She's catching the guy who's the science writer, who's going to go back and blog about this stuff and write all kinds of cool articles, and then instantly tweeting about it so the rest of the world can see what we're doing via, via social media. All three active careers here at a museum. And then you need, well, people like me. In case you didn't notice, my name's Lee. And look, here's another person named Lee. I think it's a conspiracy. We're just hiring people named Lee here at this museum. This is my buddy Lee Hall, and he's looking at a whole bunch of jars where Roberta stores all of her amphibians that she brings back to the museum. This room is amazing. Thousands and thousands and thousands of jars full of amphibians. And when he is talking to curators about the research, Lee does have to have a sense of humor. Notice that face. The fellow next to him is Tim Madsen, who's a wonderful guy. He's our curator of vertebrate zoology, but he is kind of a dry fellow. And so when Lee Hall is interviewing him for our specimen spotlights, he's, he's cutting it up all kinds, having fun. And that's another job, being an actor who likes to talk to scientists and then translate their research into a fun program. It's kind of nuts, isn't it? All right, so enough about me. Now let's go look at a porcupine. No, seriously, a porcupine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little tiny tidbit of one of our live streams. That is my friend Katie hanging out with a porcupine named Lancelot. Because we had a demand to go out into the field. I've got the sound off, so don't panic. You don't. Uh, you could hear her if you wanted to, but I'm going to talk over her. Yes, she's petting a porcupine. And I'm standing there, live streaming that to 18 different classrooms in a faraway county in Ohio. And this was great, because the kids could ask her all kinds of questions about what it's like to be a zookeeper, what it's like to take care of a porcupine. And we could get up close and see Lancelot's great big claws on his feet at the same time. Plus, I have fun because I get out of the studio and I get to roam around and hang out with the wildlife people when we are doing programs like that. So there you go, folks, an example of how a natural history museum that you normally think about as just the dinosaur museum. We have tons of different weirdo jobs here. And all of our programs that we teach here from the studios or live streaming, we're commenting on that as we go. Oh, how did you get this job? Or what did you do before you got here? Why did you like to get this kind of job? That sort of stuff. And I want to save enough time for q and I've seen a lot of questions on the chat, gang. So I'm just going to wrap it up with a still shot of our website. This is the current traveling exhibit here. So when you do go to cmnh.org, you're going to see this cheetah jumping along. And notice the blue words there where it says visit, learn, join and support, etc. If you click on learn, that will drop down a great big huge bunch of options for you. And you can click on either interactive video conferencing, what I'm doing here, or a virtual field trip, the live streaming, wandering around and going out to uh, our natural areas and that kind of stuff. And there you go. So now you've seen our, our, um, our whole process. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm handing it off to anybody or not, if Eric's doing okay out there or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut off my, <laughs> my sound, let our moderators jump back in, and you folks can uh, start throwing us chat questions. Thanks so much for letting us talk to you about all of our career connections. Bye. All right, thank you, Lee. Uh, this is Eric Seil. I'm jumping in here now. I uh, worked out uh, the audio issues, the old um, rebooting the computer um, trick um, solved the problem. So I apologize to anyone um, about that. So let me just jump right into this. Uh, I am from WVIZ PBS Ideastream. Uh, we are the public broadcasting station for Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we have an education department here and part of the um, uh, what we do in our education department is to work with um, teachers and students to um, help them teach better and learn better, especially around um, a lot of our public broadcasting content. Uh, I'm in charge of the distance learning programs here, and our programs are mostly focused around career programs. And I'm just going to uh, share my screen here. Um, <clears throat> share my screen here with you so you can just see a little bit of what we um, do with our um, programming um, here. At, um, here at Ideastream. So um, let's pull this up here real quick and um, start my slideshow real quick. So that's me. Um, this is just a little bit of an overview of our programming here in terms of um, um, uh, distance learning and career programs. Um, we are inside of Ideastream, we have what we call NOTA. NOTA stands for North Ohio Technology Association. And what we try to do is we try to enhance 
um, education through various experiences, mostly through our career programs. And these are live and interactive programs um, that uh, you can attend through um, IdeaStream. We have like virtual field trips, career exploration series, town hall speakers. Uh, we have a performing arts series. We have um, conversation with authors and experts. Um, we've also done high school courses in collaboration with different high schools around the state. And uh, we also offer um, college that can be eligible for college credit plus as well. So let me just um, give this back towards middle school um, since you're the audience today. Uh, I just want to give you an overview of what we're doing here. But one thing that we can do is um, besides working with schools, we have an ongoing um, outreach in which we can reach our community as well to, to like um, parents and teacher organizations, um, um, <laughs> different types of um, community clubs like Kiwanis or Rotary meetings and so forth. And, um, and IdeaStream, uh, my predecessor, John Remicon, was the founding member of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. So um, uh, he brought a lot of the um, content people together that you are hearing today. And I'm happy to be um, succeeding him in that role. He actually um, retired from that. Um, one thing that you can do is that you can, in terms of um, working with IdeaStream, you can increase your school district's impact on education um, by one thing that you have unlimited access to our content if you're part of our, us as a member, or if you don't want to be part of us as, as a member, you can go to our website and you can actually look at um, various programs and participate in them in an a la carte sense. Um, these just aren't just um, um, programs that are just dealing with them, um, careers or um, artists and so forth. We find all kinds of programs that um, well that will engage you. Some special programs, such as we have a uh, we've done a Vietnam program, we're doing a voter program, we're doing uh, a Black History program. So this is all sites of um, access. We have all types of access to many different um, people that come to our station, and so since they're here, we try to. Um, uh, um, try to get them to engage with students in some type of way as well too. Um, some other things we do here, I'm gonna get into a couple of specifics in a second. This is just an overview that I'm presenting right now. Um, one thing that um, we do is we offer professional development workshops over video conferencing. We can do distance learning training on equipment. It's a way for teachers to collaborate. And we have a great, great partnership with um, um, some local universities, particularly Ashton University, in which we can offer graduate credit for your participation as well, too. So some specifics. Um, one of our most specific programs that we do is um, our Careers in the Performing Arts program. Uh, IdeaStream is located in downtown Cleveland. We're in the Playhouse Square area. If you're not familiar with Cleveland, depending on what part of the state, this is the um, a theater district where all the Broadway shows come. And this is literally right next door to us. So when different shows come to town, we are often granted access to the cast and the crew. So this is an upcoming program. Les Mis is coming soon to play our square and we're doing a career in the performing arts program around that program. We're gonna have actual cast and crew members on that program, on our program on November 6th at one o'clock and this is a chance for you to join us um, via video conferencing or zoom and we also have the opportunity if you are local you can come to our studio and be a part of this program as well too uh, when you uh, are, are doing that so um, uh, this is a, it's really really successful the last program we did was last spring we did a program with um, the cast and crew from aladdin we had um, jasmine the genie jafora and um, the wardrobe supervisor, and it was a combination of remote audiences and also in-person audience as well too. Um, so um, that's a, one example of a program. Another example of a program that we do is uh, we do various programs around the several areas such as um, um, IT, um, engineering, health, um, construction. Those are the areas that we do programs around and 
uh, and so forth. And this is an example of a program that we've done. We did a program called uh, automotive, auto, automotive Technology, a career in that. And, we, and this is just an example of a program. I actually give you like a really one minute um, overview of what happens in a program. So we, I introduced the guests. We talked about the requirements to go into a career in automotive technology. Uh, we talked about, you know, the different types of programs, certification programs, short-term certification, um, long-term certification programs as well too. We show you a little bit of a video overview of the program. Um, um, we talk a little, a little more about the training and we talk about, you know, uh, specifically about the schooling that's required. This is the same format for every program, what we do. And we talk about what you will learn to do. We give you like an inside look of what it is to actually work in that specific career. So I know when, uh, when students are approaching this age, they're always getting asked the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? And they, they're not actually sure. I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm still not sure what I want to be when I grow, when I grow up, but still, uh, at least when this um, uh, question comes to them, they can at least um, talk about uh, it be exposed to some careers. So um, we, after we go through the overview of the little uh, the PowerPoint as well too, we talk to them about the latest trends in this career as well, and then we leave room for um, Q and A as well too at the end of the um, program. So that's this is a little bit of an overview of what we're doing inside of an actual program. So I know the hour is um, almost. Um, done and um, so I will toss it to the next person right now. I think we may be going back to Tisha, whoever that is. And um, thank you for your time. And um, I um, hope to hear from you soon. If you need more information, you can go to our website, ideastream.org. Thank you. Thank you all. This was fantastic. And I'm going to turn it over to Kathy um, to answer, uh, read off some of the questions and uh, that we've gotten through the chat. It looks like it was very busy. Um, and I know we just have a couple of minutes, but let's head on over to the, to the questions. Sure. The first couple of questions are for Info Ohio. Jennifer, I, I believe you may have covered this, but you broke up a little bit during the session. Uh, what do educators need to do to log in? You do not need to do anything to log in, um, or you shouldn't have to do anything to log in because this is uh, using geolocation. If you're challenged for a username or password or something like that, you, there is a button that you can click that will help you, we will help you. And if that doesn't work out right, contact support.infoohio.org and we'll get back to you and get that resolved. But you should not, as long as you're in Ohio, you should not ever need a username and password. That's great. So we can even get access to these resources at home. Correct. Okay. Um, on the Info Ohio site, what does the career collection button do from the main navigation page? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen real quick because I saw that so that you can see. There, there, I'm not sure which button uh, the person's referring to, but there's a career, college and career readiness page that has the tools like I wonder that I talked about um, in it, as well as other things. And then there's a, a, a source called career collections. I've got that open in another tab to be quick. Career collection has all kinds of articles and images and things like that. Um, that deal with careers. So on this particular one, I pulled up a medical um, animation or uh, about a knee, about knee replacements. You can do, you can find lots of information on almost any career and about small businesses, the vocational um, and career um, P, uh, magazines and journals that are specific, like the welding journals, things like that, are in this career collection. I hope that answers what the person was wanting to know. Great, thank you, Jennifer. The next question is for Tom at the Cleveland Clinic. You shared many resources with us about um, the upcoming events. Do we need a code for each of those sessions? 
Uh, when you register, uh, and it's just a quick form that you fill out that uh, explain that gives us some information, your email, uh, you are then registered for the Worldwide Classroom, and each session we then send out an invitation. Uh, not everybody's going to come to every one of them, so the invitation is a registration uh, for that specific session. Uh, and once then you go on to the next one, you'll get another invitation. So technically you need a new code for each one. Uh, it also helps us know who's going to be attending uh, and also then sends you reminders, very similar to Zoom, that it's going to you know, remind you a day ahead of time, send you a code, uh, explain to you the, the process for logging into the session. So I hope that helps. There was one more question, and I know that our time is up, but one more question that we had for Jordan was uh, if someone would, if you would share the URL for the teacher lessons and resources again. Um, if you don't have time to do that now, Jordan, if people don't care, we can put the links to your, your emails in the email I'll send out with the certificate of attendance for today so people can contact you directly. It's up to you, Jordan dot org slash educators will bring you to um, this database where you can search for all of our different programs if that's what you were speaking about. Will you, will you say that again, please, Jordan? Cosi.org slash educators. Um, sure and that's where the lesson plans are, the guides? The lesson plans are Currently, you have to register for the program first, and then you get access to those, um, to the teacher guides. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, Jordan. And again, when I send out the certificates, if the panelists don't mind, I will put their contact information right in the email, along with the certificates that you should receive either yet today or tomorrow. I think that's it, Tisha. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. This uh, recording will be um, shared out as well as all the, the certificates will be sent to your emails for those of you who attended today. Thanks again for coming and have a great afternoon.